I think we can all agree at this point that adding some sort of motion or animation to your website or digital product can greatly improve the experience. But the problem up until now has been that when we create animations or custom pieces of motion, you can't really interact with them. There's nothing you could really do with them except present them. Well, now Lottie Files has recently released their State Machines feature that allows you to create custom animation that you can actually interact with and implement directly into your projects using the .lottie format. So in this video, I'm going to get you into state machines using Lottie Creator, get you up and running, show you the basics so you can start creating animations in motion that you can actually do something with. So what are state machines and how do we understand them? Well, I like to break it down into these four core concepts and doing this and understanding these will allow you to build anything that your heart desires. First up, the most important are the states themselves. States are a playable animation, either the entire animation or just a segment or chunk of any particular animation. I like to think of this like scenes in a movie. Maybe scene one is a romantic scene and scene two is an action scene. They're very different, but they're part of the same story. Number two, you have to understand transitions. These are the bridge that connect the states. Maybe it goes from an idle state to a hover state to a press state. That's the transition of this entire story. Thirdly, you have inputs. These are the variables that drive the transitions. Maybe the user hovers over something and the system checks to see if that hover state is true or if the progress is more than 50. And lastly, we have the interaction. This is what the user does to actually progress the story and move from scene to scene, activate those transitions through those inputs. Maybe it's walking into a room and flipping on a light switch. You've gone from the dark state to the light state. Now that you understand the core concepts, let's jump in and start building some stuff. If we dive back into my animation project, you can see I can run this timeline and just let the animation play, but that doesn't give me the type of control or interactivity that I'm looking for. I wanna add some state-based animation and some controls for the user. A real simple version of this is just to allow the user to click to run the animation. That would be a simple thing to do, and we can do that very simply. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to come down on our timeline to this left-hand bar and open up the different segments. Right now, this is one long animation we haven't broken it up into any segments or scenes so we're gonna go ahead and do that now we're gonna build our first segment and we're just gonna run the timeline out and figure out right when our animation starts to change it's right about there I'm gonna grab the end handle drag it in and then I can just come right here and say mark the work area it's gonna track from zero to nine frames let's call this the idle segment just like that then we want to create a, another segment and this time we will drag those handles out a little further let's just drag that out over there we definitely know it's going to start right where it left off how long does it go well our animation our check mark comes out into the box closes and his head stops moving right around there why don't we drag that back lock that into place say match the work area and we'll call this uh check mark something like that and boom just like that now we have our two different segments you're going to need those segments as we move over to the top right and click away from animate over to the state machines workspace now we're in the state machines workspace you can see that i have those segments right here it's called chirk mark which is not what it's supposed to be named but that's fine we're going to drag our workspace up because what i want to do is i just want to drag that idle animation into my workspace we get this nice kind of WYSIWYG editor we can kind of drop that node there and then let's drag that check mark segment right over here you'll notice that my initial state is set to idle i can change that i can drag initial state somewhere else, maybe my final state or a global state. But right now we're just gonna do a simple start and go with a click. To do that, we're probably gonna need to set up some of those inputs and interactions that we talked about before. Let's create a new input and we'll click here and we have a lot of different options here. We can create Boolean operations, events, numeric strings. Let's just do an event and let's just call this start. Something like that, really, really easy. Then we'll head over to interactions and then we will create a new interaction. What type of interaction do we want it to be? We want the user to click on it. So when they click and what area do we want them to click? It could be the whole thing. That's the name of that layer right now. Let's give it an action and we'll fire off an event. We'll click here and we'll say fire off the start event. Perfect. Now we can come down 
to our workspace and drag the exit. The greens are the entrances and the reds are the exits. So we're just gonna drag this over to our check mark animation, click right here in the middle and bring this interface up. So what we want to do is immediately we want this to happen. You can actually set this to tween in between those states if you want, not much is gonna happen in our use case. But let's add a condition. And when we do that, we say the input is start, that's all we need to do. Now we can press play and you can see that our animation, our, our idle state has run. It's sitting there waiting for our click function to take place. If we click on that, it fires off that animation and it's all done. Now, if we had further segments or scenes, we could continue to drag those out and lead them from one to another. This is a very simple use case. You could do this for hover states for buttons, clickable animations. Let's move to a more complex example. In this example, I have brought in a bunch of SVGs from Figma, a lemon and an orange and a background to build kind of an interactive toggle. And I've already broken this up into segments. You can see my logic, the way that I'm thinking about it. The first thing I want to happen is when it's just sitting in its idle state, I want it to have this cool, fun looping animation where the orange is kind of just wiggling. You can see that kind of taking place it'll just wiggle forward and back forward and back the next thing is the orange will transition into the lemon when the user toggles the switch i want it to move over into the new lemon position then we have our lemon wiggle that's happening it's kind of just the reverse of the other one our lemon's going to wiggle forward and back and then lastly if the user clicks we want it to toggle back over to the orange slice state i built those different segments when i come over into state machines you can see how i have my project set up i had these over here i just drug those out onto the canvas and we'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see my initial state is my orange wiggle when i press i've set it so that it's just going to loop that animation loop that wiggle now what's really cool is you can click on these different states and set your parameters. I actually animated the forward and the back state. I actually didn't even really need to do that. I could have just come in here and just animated the forward, the wiggle to the right, and then we could have actually looped it backwards, forward, reverse, or bounced it back and forward. You can set this to loop a certain amount of times or like I have it, infinite, and it's gonna autoplay when the whole thing begins. From there, when the user clicks on this and I set up my inputs up here, I've set up a Boolean operation. We could just edit that, open it up so you can see. I'm basically saying, is it to the left? Is it on the orange slice? And then I've set that default to be true. Then we've set up our interaction over here. When the user clicks, for instance, on our switch that is specifically that little orange slice, we're going to basically set an input value. We're gonna say, hey, that left, or is it left, or is it an orange slice still? Let's now set it to false. Now, why does that matter? Because in between, what we're saying is, hey, immediately, if the input is equal to false, we want you to transition to this next state. That's where you get the wiggle happening. And once the user clicks, it's gonna move over through that item and straight into the lemon wiggle. Let's start that over, stop it again. You'll see it's going to pass through, make that transition and immediately start looping through with the same parameters that we gave our orange wiggle, we've given to our lemon wiggle. Now we can click it and send it back. Now we have a really cool interactive toggle switch that's not your boring everyday average toggle switch. You can do this in a lot of different ways. There's a way you could do this with just the actual wiggles and then tween in between. You can see I have these set with their own transition and instead of an instant transition, I'm just asking it to do that work for me. We could play this. You can see my toggle or my wiggle is happening and when I click, it's it's going to transition over, transition back. We're letting the Lottie Files creator and state machines do some of that tweening or animation in between, filling in the gaps if we don't want to do the work. Now, Lottie Files has recently just released their new state machine AI assistant, which would allow you to do something like this. Input a prompt based off of your segments, tell it what you want it to actually do and accomplish. And when you go ahead and submit that prompt, it's going to do the work for you. It's going to build all of those states, those transitions, everything and you can see here that's accomplished that job and it can run through all those states without you having to manually build it for yourself here's another example of a more complex kind of setup in this case we have a global state set when we press play nothing's really happening but when we press on our 45 button you can see our coin is now rotating at 45 degrees if i click on 90 degrees it's going to shoot over to a 90 degree angle 
or negative 45. And we can click back and forth in between these to get a really fun interactive experiment. And notice as I click on each of these different segments, it fires off that next node to be looping over and over. We have different movie scenes. We're connecting those different movie scenes with just a click of the button. The last one is a lot of fun. This one has some directional motion happening to it. So when we press play, we get our looping idle state down here with our shape. It's just kind of puffing up and down. And if I click right, you'll see it immediately fires off the right animation. It activates that state or that scene. Push it to the right. We can push it over to the left, push it to the top. And of course we can push it down to the bottom and it's firing off each one of these whenever I tell it. It's smart, it understands the user's input, gives direct feedback because we've built it using state machines. This is a great example of how complex you can actually make your interactive animations using state machines in Lottie Creator. Now you're able to allow the user to click on things, hover on things, address specific elements with their own internal animations. Everything is built together to create this really interactive experience and this is now possible because of state machines. Well, that's everything you need to know about state machines inside of Lottie Creator. What do you think? Are you gonna be using this on your next project? Let me know what interests you most down in the comments. Let's start the conversation. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you know when more design and motion and animation video content like this one comes out. With all that being said, happy animating and we'll see you in the next one, Design Champs.